welcome back, I guess. I didn't have time yesterday for recording because of Arch Age, but now we should have time for like three or four hours. Um, I just saw that my recording started, but the little green icon is not in the top. So... Hmm, I guess that's a little bug. But I checked it in the folder. The recording is actually there. But yeah, let's check out this place before we go in there. Can we even? No, it's bar Bard. Bard. Also, I want to check out the flamethrower. Okay, so we have assault rifle. This is the new hunting rifle. See what's going I wish on. I could do that. Kill on side. Does that mean they don't attack me now anymore, or what's going on? So much she like look I have 80 healing. What is this? Phrase journal. entrance maybe of the the room we need to get in is it yeah it's basically the shortcut later oh. Is that a low level tech shotgun? Kinda. Jesus, they have an explosion rate. I think they are deactivated. the XP though but it's good that they basically don't attack on site right now so that's good okay, so the flamethrower uses energy cells Oh my god, so many mods, holy shit. And this is the room, right? Yeah. It's probably for the people that like to sneak, I guess.
Konsul bir Bizantium. Stambeton Ultra 2, nice. Nimble fingers, Captain. Ooh, nice. I think there's no more enemies here just because of that one room. Oh, gosh. I mean, update. Silencer Bleed On it, Captain Real quick. I would actually like to read what Earth had to say. Hmm. Stop in the engine room. Would you ask Parvati to send Sam down to the bridge? Okay.
know you can do this Felix. But that gives you funny ideas about human mechanical relationships that I... I... Oh, Captain! <laughs> Just doing some routine maintenance on our automech friend. Don't mind me. Hey, Captain. I got a thing I want to ask you. It's kind of big. I was thinking about what you said before, after we went to the Lost Hope on the Groundbreaker. I reckon you're right. I think I'm ready to stop fretting and fussing and and ask Junlei to go steady straight out. And I'm thinking of doing it here, on the ship. I was kind of hoping you'd offer. The thing is, I can't ask her over like, like this. I mean, look at me. I'm all covered in engine grease, and I ain't showered in nigh on a week. Oh. I smell like sweat most days, and, well, don't look too close to my fingernails. I was thinking, hoping, we could stop by Groundbreaker for mass applause. I mean, only if you're not busy. Or when you're heading for Groundbreaker for something else. Yeah, I'm heading there You don't gotta anywhere. change plans on account of me. Anyhow, next time we dock in Groundbreaker, let me know. Because I want to come with. Dust accumulation analysis. 2.5 years. Thank you. Sam. Felix keeps asking me to watch some adventure serial with him. It's not my thing, but he's real sweet about it. So I can't send them there, I guess? Huh. Did I miss this? Welcome back, Captain. How can I be? May luck. Whoosh. Destination reached. The groundbreaker. Let's get the hey, that pad down there with the lights off. There are people on the uh, let's get the supplies first, and then I think Edna is at the end where Junlei is. If 
If you're here for this week's magazine club meeting, you're a touch late. I think I got just the thing, my dear. A few years back, Auntie Cleo's put out a whole makeover kit, and I snagged a couple for myself. High-grade shampoo and conditioner, scrubby brush, a nice lotion, that sort of thing. I still got them, too. What's the scrubby brush for? Cleaning around your nails, sweetheart. Gets the engine grease out. Makes your hands soft. Most folk don't got the time. Or bathtubs for such. Me included. I'll let you have one on clearance. You want rosish, mock apple and cinnamon, or refurbished shit? Oh, gosh. I've never talked about what kind of smells she likes. I think pretty much every spot on Groundbreaker just smells like old socks. It comes down to what sort of intent you got. If I was looking to do a spy job over in engineering, I'd be safe with refurbished ship. Now, if I was a young thing trying to come on all precious-like, I'd probably go with rosish. But if I was doing it for my own self, I'd pick mock apples and cinnamon. I guess you could eeny miny mow it. Take your time, dear. A lady scent says a lot about oh God. her. Like grit and grime covered over with cleaner, you mean? Well, that's a smell that means we're really going places. I'll just wrap that up for you, since it's for a special occasion. I'll pay for that, ma'am. Thanks for being so helpful. You're welcome, dear. I've got a lovely little... Whoa! Just give me a new gun? Oh, that's because of the discount, right? Um, Jesus, that has a fuck ton of DPS. Holy crap. Damage, 32. Times 6? Oof. I should buy that, but it's so expensive. Fires the hailstorm of cruise bullets, the loading is complex, resulting in long reloads. But it sounds cool, I have. I'm probably be gonna find something like this, but yeah, apparently there's a plasma launcher. Great. Wanna I hope this fancy soap we got is extra strength. I'm feeling a might. Thanks, Captain. I'm gonna put these someplace safe. In her messages, June Lay said her mama used to make this dish for Monarch. Dustback casserole. Saltuna and Xeno Gold needle mushrooms. And then for dessert, there's a thing called, uh, sweetheart cake. It's made with almond paste and wax gourds. Now, there's gotta be some place in Stellar Bay that can bake a casserole. And I heard tell there's a Rizzo's town near there called Cascadia, what specializes in sweets. I know I'm asking an awful lot, but I'm sure it's going to be worth it. It's Stella Bay, Jesus Christ. Um, this is also on Monarch, right? Yeah. This is also Stella Bay. Skiller. Skiller. Stella Bay. My comm center already got an update ping from the backup relay. I trust everything went smoothly. Thanks. Hmm, that's odd. The only messages in the queue are encrypted ones. Looking at the transmission logs, 
The relay hasn't received a single unencrypted message in the past 36 months. Must be on account of some new security red tape. Well, whatever's the cause, the board and the Earth Minister will see it sorted. Thanks again for saving my derriere. I secured quite the payment authorization for you from Chief Jun Lei. Try not to spend it all in one place. How much? Oh, one fight, okay. Speak your mind, honestly. Okay, off to Monarch, I guess. Captain, if you're looking for crew members LA or Felix, they're sharing a drink upstairs. What? Something something Felix? You ever notice how our crew's a lot like that crime family from the masked marketeer? So who's Parvati? You remember the youngest daughter who always does Good to see you, boss. Okay, so there is Olympus, not yet, Tartarus, Scylla. Oh, so on the same planet is also Byzantium, or Byzantium, or whatever it's called. Oh, okay. Cascadia and Stella Bay. Wait, is there something in Cascadia? have to go here though. Probably the Where other landing bay is for people... Bay, it's probably for the people who didn't have the money to buy the stellar key. I have received a transmission from Roseway from a Dr. Shaw. Really? Welcome back, Captain. I have received a trans... What? Oh, is this on? Oh, it's on right now. Oh, blast! Hello? I'm trying to reach the captain of the unreliable. I'll keep this short lest I get caught. Please return to Roseway as soon as you can. I have an item of great value that you'll be interested in. Now, how do I... How does this blasted thing turn off? Damn, engineers never label these toggles clearly. Is it the... The transmission is complete, Captain. Um. Take care. Okay, let's get it quick. We're now in orbit above Roseway, Captain. Jesus.
Ah, I remember you. You must have received my wireless. Thank the law. I went to great risk to send that. Aha! I knew that it'd entice you to return to our dangerously unprofitable township. I asked you here because I have a working prototype of the Alti Nature, Auntie Cleo's very first weapon. I'd like you to have it before it gets confiscated. Um. The schematics you fetched for me lent themselves well to the creation of the beauty you now possess. Unfortunately, Auntie Cleo R&D felt otherwise. The market's already saturated, they said. Weapons are everywhere. They aren't interested in mass-producing the Alti Nature. Which makes this an illegal prototype weapon. Given your unlawful proclivities, I thought it'd be safest with you. So here we are. I'd rather see it in the hands of a free agent than destroyed. Okay. Build this prototype on here. Energy. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Captain, if you're looking for crew members Ellie or Felix, they're sharing a drink upstairs. Yep. We're now in orbit of a stellar bay, Captain. Keep it down. Hold on there. I gotta sign you in. Don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? You must have seen those UDL gunships on your way in. There's only three of them these days. Still, they tend to scare folk off. You may not have heard, you being new, but Stellar Bay hardly ever gets off-road traffic. Us being cut off by the board and all. Which means I never get to do this part, but I've been practicing, so here goes. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest Sal Tuna and Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Swell. There's one for the logs. I'm even going to give you your own entry code. 
I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. We don't get ship traffic in town. Only off-worlders who do make it out here are sublight. They got a base in Fallbrook. And thank the stars for them, or we would have run out of Rizzo's Purple Berry Crunch years ago. Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. The board makes up lots of nasty stories about raptodons and cannibals and whatnot. But that's all outside our walls. Mostly. <laughs> oh, sure. It makes Stellar Bay sound like a rotten place, but it's not so bad. Get a good breeze going, and the sulfur smell mostly covers up the fishy smell. Anyway, Mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject. Kinda goes over my head, though. Mr. Sandra will be mighty pleased to meet you. If you see him over at headquarters, maybe you could tell him I did a bang-up job of welcoming you? Oh, and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? I got this Rizzo's Rangers Tosswell poster coming in on the next sublight shipment, signed by the Black Hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? That's Bertie Holcomb, only one of the greatest tossball hackers ever. Holcomb? I wonder if he's kin. Dad had family that worked for Rizzo's. I never got to meet them. Everyone's heard of him, even Holcomb, on Monarch. Yeah. We still get some of the games. You've been living in a sulfur pit or something? Like her uncle or something? Oh, you're real funny. Guess I don't feel so bad for missing what goes on in the rest of Stellar Bay. Thanks a bunch! Celia works for Mr. Sanjar in the MSI building next to the bar. She's always there, so you can't miss her. Cool armor, dude. Laws. Can't a man enjoy the smooth menthol flavor of a stogie slim in peace? What I am doing, ma'am, is enjoying the moment. So rare that I can seize one apart from the jabbering masses of this wretched place. This law's forgotten town. Cut off from the rest of the colony. Removed from any culture. I recall when Stellar Bay was a proper board affiliated town with regular shipments of Auntie Cleo's best and all the cereals. Before Sanjar took over MSI and got us all booted. Well, you wouldn't know it from talking to anyone else here. High and mighty about our collective freedom. Free to wallow in the dust, more like. Look, you're making me melancholy. Is there something you wanted? And the little bastard's slippery, right? on account of its blood, so it's it's sliding all over the place, trying to crawl away. Getting so I can't tell the tell the blood from the mud. But I gotta get in there, get right in that baby wrapped stomach and dig it out. If so much as a drop of stomach acid got on that medallion, I'd shit, I don't know what I'd do. Might be I'd hunt every damn wrapped out there. Right. What are you staring? Wait, you ain't from around here. Who are you? Ooh, charmer. Don't get a lot of that around here. Folks mostly grump at me about how I should join the MSI payroll. 
Nice change of pace. I mean, drink, will you? Outstanding! What are you doing in Stellar Bay, stranger? Well, 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 well. Let's get down to brass nuts then, shall we? Brass, wait, that ain't it. Brass rats? Let's, let's talk business. I'm headed back out there after I sober up. You want a guide sooner than that? You'll have to get me something to clear my head. Outstanding! Our dispensary here maintains a stock of, uh, well, I don't rightly know what they are. Steroid or caffeine somethings? Pills. They're very good. I'm cut off for the month, on account of needing one just about every damn day. But I'm sure you've got your wily ways. Fetch me one and we'll be all set. Well, they work. We got a deal or what? Wouldn't mind smelling like Saltuna. <laughs> Velma soon out of sorts to you? He's always cranky. Ooh, you're the new face. Wow, you must be up on all the latest tossball games. So who do you follow? Wait, don't tell me. You look like a Hammersmith Thunder fan. No, Glacial H. Mammoths. Aren't they just? When I get to worrying about the marauders outside, the raptodons chewing at the walls, I just turn my transceiver up to drown it all out. Most of the time it's static on account of the frequency being clogged up, but sometimes it's toss ball. So, what can I do for you? Graham's always filling the airwaves with this propaganda, like it's done him any good. All it means is the toss ball games get to us in fragments. Makes them real hard to watch. It's a big place. Oh crap, the region is also pretty big. If Hello, dearie. Why, I don't believe I've seen you before. And with sweet cheeks like those, I'd remember. Quite the bedside manner, lady. Well, it's so rare I get the pleasure of new company. What can Auntie Abigail do for you? And what a helpful young lady you are. Nothing like a little pill to liven up the spirits. Whiskey helps, too. Please leave medical advice to the professionals. Now, dearie, who's this pickup for? I'm so sorry, but with the iconoclasts and the marauder filth chasing away what little trade we get, I'm afraid I have to reserve my supply for Stellar Bay residents. Our reserves have gotten so low, I've even had to start locking the supply room upstairs. Isn't it a shame what some people will do to get a little extra? Mm. Except for you, I can tell you've got one of those faces. I'd make an exception for you if I could, my little cherub. 
Is there anyone else needing a special pickup from Auntie Abigail? Oh, her. It's none of my business, but I have told her Dr. Williams would bump up her monthly allotment if only she'd join MSI, contribute like the rest of us. Now I've gone and said too much. <laughs> and you know me, dearie, I don't like to pry. Well, I'm afraid not. Dr. Williams managed the town's allotments from his terminal upstairs. Even I can't access them. Oh, you flattering old woman. Me, I'm just here to be a pretty face for the customers. And to keep an extra key to the supply room for all the times Dr. Williams misplaced his. The one upstairs, where we store our medicines. In the town graveyard, I'm afraid. Poor man was always searching for the flower of enlightenment. On the way, he tried some Rather daring substance combinations. Oh. Okay. The graveyard's near the southern ruins. You're certainly welcome to pay our respects, but the bodies tend to attract beasties. Do be careful. I'd hate for anything to happen to you, dearie. Chin up, dearie. Try to fuck up. If Velma's cable well, is running her house, stuff. The charmer. Welcome back. Drink, chat, or business. All of the above? Says someone who's never had any fun. Exactly. See, I'm glad someone on your crew's got some sensi sensible. Got her head on straight. Whew, that hits the spot. Right in the, uh, Oh, no, there it is. There it is. Yes. We're in business. <laughs> Let's go. Jesus. That was fast. I gotta see about stalking some on the ship. You be careful. The first one's free. After that, they'll offer you gainful employment. Great. Where to? Oh, Hiram? I ain't checked in on that man in an age. He's running the giant radio tower we lovingly call Devil's Peak. We'll be going south and west, mostly along the road till we're past Fallbrook. Out there, there's a western slope that'll lead us through some, uh, some fun. You like hunting, right? That's fun. If you're more of a spelunker, Rotting River will take you into the mountain caverns. We can discuss options when we get closer. That said, uh, three's already a crowd. I don't mind waiting somewhere until you got a spot open. I hope you like being part of our crew, Nyoka. We're real excited to have you. Oh, no, no. Monarch ain't safe, even with me around. 
I've just got intimate knowledge of its dangers and an abundance of fortitude. Folks hire me because I know what you can shoot and what you ought to run from. That's a mistake you only get to make once. Find some armor for her. I don't really want to go. Cool. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest Saltuna and Halcyon. What can I do for you today? You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it. But if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. Or is he not paying you on account of how he tried to fix a thing his own self and busted it even worse, and then said you wasn't fixing it fast enough, so he's docking your wages again? Not that I got any prior experience with such. Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well, I just spent most of my paycheck on a raptid on acid. Laws, no. Sometimes it's canid teeth or mantis warm wings, whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. So I can talk to him, of course. He doesn't get going about much else. I reckon she's got a little bit of a squish on this fella. He's sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff, and some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. Would you? I'd appreciate that so much. Uh, maybe don't tell him I wanted you to ask. Just that you met this really nice lady named Celia, and she seemed... Oh. Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. He doesn't talk much, but he's got this quiet intensity, you know? Like there's stuff going on inside his head that you have no idea about. Plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body exercises. You think that's what I'm looking for? You're funny. Not in Stellar Bay. Everyone else who isn't taken either smells like Saltuna or they're my boss. Besides, 
A man with a good smile and a proportionate upper to lower body ratio isn't something to pass up. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Did you hear that power play, Celia? They don't make them like this anymore in Halcyon. I only hope you don't judge me by my handshake. Now, what business brings you here? Out at Devil's Peak? If you're headed that far, I see you've brought the right woman for the job. Damn right. But if you're here for him, I suppose that means you aren't here for Saltuna. Now, now, there's no need to humor me. I'm used to this particular letdown. Seems like you're having a rough time, Mr. Sanjar. Are you doing quite all right? Oh, don't worry on my account. This is merely the latest in a long line of professional erotic and athletic disappointments. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. Thanks to the so-called Hazard Clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. So-called is right. We've got our hazards, but we're still here, damn it. The board took off without so much as a thought for the folks left behind. I don't... Dang it, Captain, that's not right. Folks on Monarch shouldn't have to suffer just because the board says so. Well, we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. Yes, freedom is a tempting ideal, but a rather costly paramour. Indeed. Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. But will that help the people here, Mr. Sanjar? Keep them fed and safe? That's precisely what I'm trying to do. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. With a Bolt 52 cartridge, of course. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. In the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in, these days it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Oh, this is where the raptodons are. Oh, that's gonna be interesting. Do be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? 
Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. I've asked myself the same thing many times, especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. Not intentionally, though that's technically true. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. Back then, it was known as Terra 1. Really? I always thought they were refreshingly straightforward names. After all, the whole point of terraforming was to make them Earth-like. Here, though, the results were... mixed. That ain't fair. They didn't leave on account of the hazards. They left on account of their cowardice. The hazards just gave them a reason to put to paper. Sharp as ever, Nyoka. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. So the cross-shaped objects on the map <coughs> should be, or I think they are actually the old terraformers, probably. Our leadership at the time certainly wanted to, but there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. It's humane. But it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. I hope you'd treat them nice whether it was good business or not, Mr. Sanjar. That's what being a community means. Treating people right because it's the right thing to do. Hear, hear. That may not be the way the colony works, but it damn well ought to. Mm -hmm. A noble thought, Miss Holcomb. Unfortunately, Noble thoughts rarely sway board policy. Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. No, they laughed in our faces and insisted we'd be relocating to Terra 2 along with everyone else. In a manner of speaking, many of us stayed behind in an act of quiet but firm defiance. As the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. I moved forward with our planned reforms as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. I don't think I realized how far they'd stoop. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules, and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. Something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. Yeah, that'd go a long way toward rebuilding our homes. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community, and being cut off means slow strangulation. I'm not a man to put pride before progress. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. I've discovered it's much easier to negotiate from a position of power. And I don't mean to leave MSI or its people at a disadvantage. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here. <coughs> Who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. A straight bullshit is what it is. A fabrication rich folks use to preserve their investments by leaving a lot of people here to die slow. Nyoka has the right of it. It's a legal provision that gives the board the authority to cordon off any planet or location that it deems dangerous. But wait, what happens to the folks stuck on the wrong side of dangerous? Well, I'm afraid the welfare of a few hundred people is too minor a figure into the board's risk assessments. 
Yes, making all of MSI criminals in the board's eyes. Rather hard to run a business that way. What can I do for you? Oh, Well, well. The only new folk I ever see in town are sublight runners from Fallbrook. But you don't look like one of Catherine's. What can I get you? If you don't see it, I don't got it. Don't go asking for the special reserve. Oh, shit. Okay. MSI shotgun. I guess that's the upgraded version. Light pistol. Oh, that's the armor that the uh, guards have, huh? Hmm. That's how it looks. Okay, I was wondering, does it like affect? Huh. But yeah, looks cool.
Yeah, I need to get the stuff from my... ...ship. I think I'm gonna be sick. I clean the apartments while everyone's at work. I've seen all sorts of messes, but this... If you're going into the apartments, do not go into the lower one on the right. That's where the body is. Now, if you'll excuse me. Sorry. Just spooked me, was all. Even Stella Bay ain't safe these days. What's the world coming to? Here to catch a game? I'm afraid the transmission's still pretty bad. What can I do for you? Poor Isaac. I was wondering why I hadn't seen him in a few days. I'd really like to help. Isaac was a sweet fellow, even if he did have terrible teeth. Teeth. Right. So the thing with Isaac is he didn't know where to stop. He'd get stuck on something, and he just couldn't let it go. Sometimes he'd drink Purpleberry Punch by the leader, other times he'd keep betting on a losing team. Started owing the wrong people money. I don't know for sure, but I saw Elijah and his buddies pushing Isaac around. They're hooligans from Fallbrook. They sweep into town, drop supplies off behind the warehouse, and spend the rest of their stay getting rowdy over tossball games. They usually loiter in the alley behind the yacht club. They're not allowed in the bar anymore. I bet you anything Isaac ran into trouble with one of them. Mr. Sanjar will be pleased to hear about it when you're done. I know he gets fed up with the Fallbrook bullies, but there's not much he can do. Like wrapped in here. 
Oh, it does work. I bought some money. Look, you can tell Catherine the new shipment will be ready when it's ready, all right? She's welcome to come up here and pack boxes herself if she's in such a hurry. Sorry, seems I got my cables crossed. Thought you were another shakedown tough from Fallbrook. I hope you can forgive my temper. This job has been running me ragged lately. First, my autoloader foreman stages a walkout, and now my chief pescatological health manager is missing. Braxton. He's in charge of getting the fish fat, but also making sure they don't get too many tumors. He's a real wizard with pharmaceuticals, but he has creative notions of working hours. Comes with living in a free colony, I guess. I can't keep working double shifts either. Since you don't seem to be constrained yourself, maybe you could check up on him. He lives in the apartments. Tell him Velma said to get his lazy ass down here, or she might start noticing those extra drugs he's been taking from supply. Something else on your mind? This again? I swear, this is the last time I contract for any special requests. You can tell Grimm his poster came in. You can also tell him I got a better offer for it. So now it's going to Nell. That about cover it? She runs the bedding parlor across the way. Nice professional lady. She asked me about the poster once. Just once. Made a real generous offer, too. Damn right it is. No. I paid Sublight for it. So, it's mine. And when Nell pays me for it, it'll be hers. Grimm may have asked for the poster, but it's not his until I take his money. It's staying locked up in my office until Nell shows with her money. Sure can. If you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. Sure. And once you finish helping me, then we can talk about the poster. Huh. Fine by me. Caleb Herrick runs the autoloader operators. He thinks I don't pay them enough for flipping switches and turning dials. So the job's easy, but you're not doing it? Something smells here. I mean, everything smells in here, but something's fishy. Uh, wait. He and his whole crew walked out. Say they won't come back unless I pay them more. You mind slapping him around a little while you're at it? I'm joking. Mostly. Unless you can do it without hurting his job performance. If you can find a way to get him back to work, I'll make it worth your while. Check the Yacht Club. He's usually there. Stealing such a nasty word. Let's call it skimming. And yeah, let's just say I've noticed the sterile biotics we use for the fish would get used a little faster on Braxton's shifts. We're not like those corporate towns where you get fined for sleeping on the wrong side of the bed. Besides, the Spacer's Choice stuff we use is cheap enough. And Braxton knows how to get the Saltuna, fat and mostly tumor free. Sublight boss out of Fallbrook. Handles most goods that come in or out of Cellar Bay. Has a mouth like a ground zig spacer. Oh. Okay. So many quests.
New face, huh? You from Offworld? A ship captain? Well, I'll be. Here, let me buy you a drink. Consider it an MSI welcome. Why don't you grab a chair, sit a spell, and revel with us? By the smell, he's been reveling enough for you both already. <laughs> me and my friends have taken our destiny into our own hands. We're untethered, free of responsibility and worldly cares. Well, as long as we don't run out of bits. But until the windfall's gone, we're riding high. See, we just walked out on our work. Had enough, we did. So now we're striking. It ain't any one thing but the sum of it all, having to work longer shifts for less bits. And the wages we do earn don't cover as much as they used to. Our supervisor, Velma, goes on and on about quarterly profits and meeting quotas. But that ain't what Sanjar promised us. Velma refuses to negotiate, so we're refusing to work. We won't go back until she agrees to pay us fair and proper. Us on Monarch. We're free from the board, you know? We have the right to lobby for better hours and pay. Sure thing. What did you want to discuss? Not forever, but we've each saved up our bits, and I stashed them safe in my home by the diner. I reckon we could last a week or two at least. Nope. I'm calling her bluff. If she wants to threaten us, we'll see how she likes it when Sanjar finds out she gave Sublight even more dominion in Stellar Bay. I never meant to call for anyone's head on a pike. Velma's not my favorite person, but she ain't been cruel to us. Devil it all. Now you got me feeling sorry for her. Fine. I guess we'll go back to work to save Velma's job. We'll find a better time to negotiate our wages. Tell Velma not to worry. We'll look out for her. Wing. What are the chances of all the times and places we could have been born? Yeah. We're here, light years from Earth, going about our lives. Every time the punch clock feels... Rap mask and canid eyes, right here. Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a woman who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. Sebastian, you ever get your hands on those pheromone sacks? Manipillers ain't gonna hunt themselves, you know. I must have hunted a dozen, but I couldn't find a single sack on any of them. I must be looking in the wrong place. <laughs> Manipillers ain't got pheromone sacks. I just told him that so he'd stop asking me for advice. At least I'm getting a good haul of claws in the process. You're in good hands, traveling with Monarch's top merc. Still, if you want any rat glands or manti claws, I've got you covered. I don't know. Celia usually buys whatever I have, and Mr. Pickett seemed real interested. So I thought maybe I was onto something. Mr. Pickett? Franklin Pickett from Edgewater? That's him. He'd been here years. But he always talked about going back to Edgewater one day. Sure. Mr. Pickett used to run the community center outside Edgewater. He had this grand idea to make it a museum for Halcyon life. As my dad told it, Mr. Pickett was always going on about getting a Manta Queen for the last display. He left the veil, gosh, years ago. He came to Stellar Bay years ago, just before the board cut us off. Ended up stuck here. He was always real interested in our monsters. Manta Queens, especially. I kept telling him he was a fool for chasing Mana Queen Tail. Anyone looking to get familiar with a queen is liable to become the bitch's supper. Oh my. Well, I hope he's all right. I haven't seen him in a while. Sure, they're real big. Hard to miss them. Well, I could send you to the same place I sent Mr. Pickett, but I haven't seen him in a few weeks. To tell true, I'm starting to get a bit worried about him. Captain, can we look for him? I'd feel awful if somebody from home was in trouble and we didn't do nothing. Tell you what. I'll tell you where I sent Mr. Pickett if you promise to look for him. Help him out if he's got himself in trouble. Fair deal?
Thanks, Captain. All right, then. Leave town through the southern gate, the one right here, and head past the abandoned ruins. Past the ruins? That's Manta territory, all right. My professional opinion is that we leave that idiot to his well-deserved fate. No offense. Last Mana Queen I saw was in the wilds out that aways. Could be Mr. Pickett still out there, too. Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days. But I've been meaning to ask her how that rapted on acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Oh, no, that's not it at all. She's smitten with you. You smited her. Smote? Smoot? Don't get me wrong. I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady. Always talks nice and slow, so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit, on account of no one else having any use for raptodon tongues. You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Give her a chance. Give yourself a chance. Take her someplace nice. Okay. I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. That's the spirit, Sebastian. Be yourself. Between you and me, Captain, I'm not sure Miss Celia knows him too well. But we can hope, right? I want them to be happy. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a day for Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this. Or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. Not to worry. If I never buy another Raptodon tongue, it'll be too soon. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do, and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back-to-work look. Anyhow, thank you. I hear those rich people in Byzantium pay a handsome bit for rap musk. I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. You spat in your spirits, Velma. You notice my mood? I'm surprised you can see straight today. I could be seeing triple and I'd still think you're being unkind. I just might find it funnier. Will you try wrangling half a ton of dead fish with decades old equipment and see what it does for your disposition? Anyway, what do you folks need? You knocked any sense into him yet? Well, that's awful nice of him. Sure wouldn't have expected that. Thanks for your help. You've gotten me out of a tight spot here. Take this for your efforts. Honest work deserves honest pay. Something else on your mind? Sure can, if you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. Oh, Braxton. Fine by me.
Startle me. Don't sneak up on a person like that, huh? Braxton. I've never even heard of a Braxton. Got nothing for you, sorry. No, oh. right, like, huh, huh, huh? In that case, he told me he was delivering to this house in the ruins south of town. Whole family had fallen sick and he had some meds on hand. So maybe look for him there? We should hurry, Captain. Thank you for stopping. Everyone acts like nothing's wrong. Like my little boy isn't at risk of being eaten by some vile creature. Please, you have to help me get my little Tucker back. He ran away and is going to get himself killed. Oh, I, I just know a Raptodon is melting him with acid as we speak. Oh, I just knew you were a good person. Agnes, I said, this is the woman to save your little Tucky. And I was right. He ran out into the wilderness a few days ago. I warned him about the raptodons, mantisaurs and marauders, the toxic sulfur pools and poisonous plants, but he didn't listen. Oh, law, Captain. A youngster won't last long in a place like this. Please, can't we help? You ain't wrong, but if he hasn't made it to Amber Heights by now, there's no saving him. Please, won't you go and find my boy? He's been pining for an adventure. Says he's tired of living cooped up behind the walls. But he doesn't understand how dangerous it is out there. I warned him. A raptodon would snap him up first chance it got. I just know once ripped his arm off and is gnawing on his sweet little fingers. He should have listened to his mama. I promised I'd keep him safe here with me. Thank you. Oh, I know he'll be safe now that someone's able to fetch him home. You look for him in Amber Heights, you hear? It's down the road southwest of town. I'm sure he made it that far. I just know it. And if you find any of them iconoclast indoctrinating my boy, you punch them in the mouths. 
Tell them what I think of them luring little boys away from their mamas. It's immoral. I need to go eating though, so let's save over there. Oops. Hey, got a favor to ask you. Figure while we're out here in the wilderness anyhow, we might stop in on an old friend of mine. Preferably before we get to Hiram's. It's on the way, don't worry. You don't seem the type to run off and get yourself killed, and I could use the help. I'll be up front with you. I hate asking for help. I hate it. Every time I give someone the opportunity to disappoint me, they seem to make it their most immediate goal. But this, what I'm thinking, it's dangerous. Really? Here I was stealing myself for inevitable rejection. I used to run with a band of hunters, friends, six of us. We were on Monarch when the corporations pulled out and we helped a lot of people pick up the pieces. I haven't seen two of them in years and the rest I know to be dead. I'd like to gather their effects and bury them all in the same places, like the family we once were. First, we go to Hayes. I buried him a ways from our encampment. I need to pay my respects. I'll show you where he rests. He had a medallion in his effects. That's what I'll bring home to bury. Then we find my two lost trackers and bring them home. A long time ago, we built an encampment in one of Monarch's cave systems. Trouble is, a mana queen showed up and kicked us all out. If we can find Rebecca and Anders, they'll know how to lure her out. Then, we kill the bitch and bury everyone's medallions together. <laughs> Thanks, Cap. Smells like those old Sundays when we... Right. Here's the road. Follow it south. Shh. Here we go! Beefy, holy shit.
to shred you say? are liable to shoot you or eat you. Or both. I wonder if he used to live here. Do you suppose anyone remembers anymore? <laughs> to pieces. Some of these sounds though sound really weird. Like I hear like monster cries in the distance or something. safe thanks for watching i see you guys tomorrow bye